Hello class and welcome back. I am Professor G and I just wanted to take a second uh, to sort of build off of and perhaps explain a little better uh, the information that I talk about in my historical methodology video uh, that's going to accompany uh, your first section of this class. And for the first section of all my courses, uh, I typically have you guys uh, read or watch something uh, that might be really strange to you. So for example, uh, you might watch something regarding UFOs and ancient civilizations, or you might watch something uh, about uh, some like really technologically advanced civilizations that we no longer have. Something that seems uh, that falls within the realm of a conspiracy theory or some other sort of extraordinary claims about the past or about history just to sort of get your creative juices flowing and also uh, because I found that a lot of you uh, a lot of you that are in my classes uh, typically believe these sorts of things um, and so sort of just kind of introducing you to historical arguments and really to arguments in general. This isn't something that's unique to history by any stretch of the imagination. It comes in uh, all sorts of different forms. And all of this has to do with, uh, really with forms of information processing. Now, this is gonna be a bit different from your other history classes, especially the history classes that you've perhaps taken in high school or middle school, if you can sort of think back to those classes uh, most of it was fact memorization, right? So you took U.S. history class in, um, in high school. Uh, you, it was typically, in, you would be tested on this information in the form of a standardized test or a form of multiple choice test in which you just had to memorize the facts, and that was it. Well, one of the things I really want to do in this class is to teach you how to process those facts, to teach you how to explain those facts and to teach you how historians and how other people analyze facts because that's really the most important tool no matter what your major no matter what you plan on doing in life uh, that's really one of the most important tools I can give you or at least attempt to give you not fact memorization not being able to tell me when the Civil War was when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Is that important information? Yeah, but it's also information that you can spend two seconds Googling. All right, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to teach you why that matters, to be able to put that into context, and also for in future, in your future, to be able to sort out uh, BS, to be able to sort out good information from bad information. And so this first unit here is basically an exercise in that, how to tell whether or, not, whether or not an argument is good, whether or not an argument is bad within the context of history, how to tell whether or not somebody is pulling your chain. Um, and you do this all the time. This is not something that I really have to spend a whole lot of time teaching you because it's something that you naturally do on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, when you're shopping, uh, when you're looking to buy something. So, to use an example, uh, let's say that right now you're watching a commercial. You're not in history class, you're just sitting uh, on your couch watching TV and I come on the screen and I say, guess what, I have fantastic news. I have these magic pills here, these pills here. What these pills are gonna do is they can make you lose as much weight as you want. They're magic weight loss pills. And I'll sell these pills to you for, let's say, five easy payments of $99. Something like that, whatever, right? For five payments, you can have these pills, and these pills will make you lose as much weight as you want to in a completely healthy manner. Now you're encountered with this sort of thing all the time and you think to yourself, well, is that true? Is that possible? Right, because your, your money is on the line. You're having to make a monetary decision. Is this something that you are willing to invest in? Now, perhaps if the pills were a bit cheaper, you would say, well, I don't know, maybe I'll put it in there. But there's, there's this thought process that's going through your head about whether or not this is a good decision, whether or not this is something that you're gonna do. 
And what I would say is that what this rests upon is, is this possible, right? So immediately you might have some red flags going up. Is this a scam? Is this person trying to run something on me here? Uh, or does this really fall within the realm of possibility? Now, how you make that decision is what I'm trying to get at. How, you do, how, do you, how would you determine whether or not this is a good decision? And how you would determine that um, usually involves some level of critical thinking. So you want to ask first, do weight loss pills really work? Does this fall in line with what I know about myself, about the human body, about weight loss, about exercise, about what doctors tell me, about whatever? And this is all that we're doing here in history. Exact same thing. So someone comes along and they say, I have evidence or I believe that UFOs assisted that alien that an uh, that an ancient advanced alien race assisted people like the ancient Egyptians in building the pyramids. Exact same situation as somebody trying to sell you magic pills, magic weight loss pills, right? So you you have to think to yourself, why? Well, how do I know that's true? How do I know that somebody is not trying to pull something on me? What sort of method? am I going to use? So for this first lecture, uh, first lecture uh, that's what we're talking about is the historical method, historical methodology, that sort of criteria, that sort of those tools that you use to process information. And all of this boils down, I think, to a really pithy quote by Carl Sagan, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, right? So if I say, I have magic weight loss pills, right? one of the very first things that you ought to be thinking to yourself, how do I know that works? Right? Let me see some proof. And I don't just want to see Photoshop pictures. I want to see some actual proof, some actual evidence before I spend my money on that. The exact same situation applies when somebody says, I believe that an ancient alien race assisted the ancient Egyptians in building the pyramids, or whatever it is, right? You gotta think, hmm, how do I know that's true? What sort of evidence you have? What sort of argument are you making? And the difficulty here is to not get lost in the details. You've heard the old expression, don't miss the forest for the trees. So, for example, in the videos that you watch, they might throw out a whole lot of different varying information at you. Well, the pyramids were built during this time. The pyramids were built in this manner. The pyramids were whatever, aligned with the stars. The pyramids, uh, a piece of paper can't fit through the gaps in the pyramids. And you have to think to yourself, okay, I have all this information. Now, what is this information telling me? And perhaps more importantly, does this information support the position that's being argued or does it not? And that's really the question that we're going to be struggling with for this section. All right, guys, if you have any questions about this, about the content, about the course in general, shoot me an email. See you later.